Greetings YouTubers, my name is PhD Tony, and welcome to episode 2 of my new series, Idiotic Questions That Flurfs Ask. Today's question is, didn't so and so say that gravity is not a force? This is an example of a relatively standard anti-science technique, in which the anti-science proponent takes a complicated and nuanced explanation from somebody who really understands the topic and knows what they're talking about, and takes a bit of it and deliberately misinterprets and misrepresents it. You know what else all these people say? The Earth is not flat, which in and of itself should let us know that the Fluff interpretation is simple gibberish. Before we go any further, however, I need to define a particular term that I'm going to be using a lot during this video. An unsupported object is an object that is not subject to any upward forces that are large enough to offset or more than offset gravitational influence. To address a favourite fleur, for example, helium balloons in Earth's atmosphere are not unsupported. They are subject to an upward buoyancy force. They are supported by the atmosphere. Conversely, helium balloons in evacuated vacuum chambers fall because they are unsupported until they hit the bottom of the chamber. The upward motion of helium balloons and hot air balloons in Earth's atmosphere is not some profound mystery that has eluded scientists for the past 400 years. With the formalities dispensed with, let's move on with the discussion. The Fleur syllogism proceeds as follows. Unsupported objects fall because there is a force acting on them. Gravity is not a force, therefore there is something other than gravity that is making them fall. The problem with this line of argument is that the first axiom employed, that objects fall because there is a force applied to them, is simply false. Because their predicate is invalid, their conclusion is invalid. Einstein's position was, unsupported objects fall because of gravity, but gravity is not a force. Of course, all of us in school were taught that gravity is a force, so how can this be? Let's look at it from the historical perspective. The first person to propose a satisfactory description of gravity was Sir Isaac Newton. In his famous magnum opus, Principia Mathematica, Newton proposed a comprehensive set of laws describing the mechanics of motion. The most fundamental of these laws of motion is Newton's first law, the law of inertia, which states that an object that is at rest will remain at rest unless it is acted on by an unbalanced force. Similarly, if it's moving with a constant speed in a straight line, it will remain doing so unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. In the same work, Newton analysed the motion of planets in the solar system and was able on this basis to derive his universal law of gravitation. I'm not going to go too much into the mathematics, but if we consider a simple two-body system with a mass m1 on the left and m2 on the right, then m1 is going to accelerate towards the centre of mass of m2, and mass m2 is going to accelerate towards the centre of mass of m1. Combining this with Newton's first law of motion, since there's an acceleration, there must be a force. Newton was able to use his universal law of gravitation to explain the orbit of the planets around the Sun, of the Moon around the Earth, and the propensity of unsupported objects near Earth to accelerate downward. This last example in particular seemed to suggest conclusively that there was a force in operation. If you hold an apple and release it, it will accelerate downward. It goes from being at rest to accelerating. That requires a force according to Newton's formulation. By the late 19th and early 20th century, when Einstein and his colleagues were coming onto the scene, it had become apparent that there were problems with the Newtonian approximation. Robust observational evidence had by this stage become available that while the Newtonian theory was an excellent approximation in most circumstances, there were some extreme conditions where it didn't perform so well. Looking more closely at Newton's position, Einstein realised that his first law of motion contained some assumptions. The phrases at rest, constant speed, straight line, all assumed a preferred non-accelerating frame of reference. Einstein questioned this assumption and set himself the challenge of reformulating the laws of physics in such a way that they would remain valid regardless of the frame of reference that the observer was operating in. In 1916, he published his results in The Fundamentals of the Theory of General Relativity. This theory explains that space-time has an inherent geometry, or curvature, and that objects will tend to move along geodesic paths to follow this curvature unless they are prevented from doing so by some unbalanced force. The tendency of objects to follow geodesics through space-time is gravity. 
Returning to the simple two-body problem we discussed earlier, in the Einsteinian formulation, what is happening is that the mass of each body deforms space-time. The curvature induced by this deformation causes each of the bodies to accelerate towards the center of mass of the other body. For modestly sized bodies in weak gravitational fields, the predictions of the Einsteinian and Newtonian theories are, for all intents and purposes, identical. The key distinction being that in the Einsteinian formulation, even though both bodies are accelerating, there is no force applied to the system whatsoever. Each body is just following its geodesic through space-time. Returning our attention to the apple that you are holding before you dropped it, the only force in this scenario is you holding the apple. Holding the apple stops it from going along its geodesic in space-time. As soon as you stop doing that, that's exactly what it goes on to do. So let's go back to some basic questions. Do unsupported objects fall because of the action of gravity? Yes. Falling is the name we give to objects that are actually just following their geodesic through space-time. And the tendency for objects to follow such geodesics is just gravity. Okay, so if gravity isn't a force, what about weight? Is weight a force? Yes, weight is a force. It is the force required to stop an object from falling. This force is calculated in the same way as previously, mg, though in this instance it's an upward acting force, not a downward acting force. Remember, the tendency to move downward is not the result of a force. Okay, flat earthers often treat this as a gotcha moment if you accidentally refer to gravity as a force. How wrong is it to do that? The answer, not very especially for a flat earther. The only circumstances where the distinction between Newtonian and Einsteinian theory is important would be in a very strong gravitational field, such as very close to a star or in some sort of cosmological or astrophysical setting. Flat earthers don't believe that such things exist, so why they're making a fuss about it is beyond me. On the surface of Earth, where the gravitational field is relatively weak and there are no large masses, it turns out that there's hardly any difference between the Einsteinian and the Newtonian theory, and it is perfectly valid to refer to gravity as a force. It's a simple pedantic quibble that flat earthers use without understanding. For an observer on Earth's surface with no interest in theoretical physics, there is no meaningful distinction between the Newtonian and the Einsteinian approximations. Einstein himself was particularly careful to make sure that his theory coincided with Newtonian theory in this setting. Turning it around, how wrong is it to claim that it is not gravity that causes things to fall? That is completely erroneous and a grotesque perversion of what Einstein himself argued. This interpretation is not supported by a single scientific organization, scientific faculty, reputable scientific journal, or sane professional scientist on the face of the planet. And the reason for that is, it's just plain wrong. Anyone trying to present the argument that the reason unsupported objects fall is because of some physical effect other than gravity is quite literally insane. And I use that word with great care. They cannot be lying. Liars try to make their deceits plausible, realistic, believable. This is just demented, deranged, and delusional, which I guess makes it a pretty typical Fleurfer argument. So that might do me for today. I hope that this was somewhat enjoyable. It was also intended to be informative for people who are interested in where this gravity is not a force argument comes from and what it actually means. Let me know in the comment section below whether you found it useful. And thank you so much for listening to the whole lot. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time.